if they're in the door of an aircraft and that green light comes on, they need to have that confidence to jump there and then when the PGI tells them to. All right, y'all, welcome back to Comet Arms Channel. Okay, so we're reacting to episode two of Pegasus Company. Now, we determined in the last episode that the YouTube channel Mike Thwaite is actually a major. I'm guessing in the paras, maybe part of the actual cadre at the course. But yeah, episode one was pretty cool. So I think in episode two, they're moving on to the Trainasium. Now, going into the military, I was pretty afraid of heights. So looking at something like the Trainasium is pretty cool because I can just imagine how daunting it would have been for me being afraid of heights, being so new into the military and doing something like this. Now, not so much. I kind of think it would be fun, but uh, yeah, I guess we'll see how it is. I'm not exactly sure how physically demanding it is, but I know it definitely tests people mentally. All right, let's get it. Man, that thing has seen better days, huh? regiments and watchwords are professionalism, resilience, discipline, versatility, courage, and self-reliance. Hmm. It is led by design, and it's expert at air land deployments by helicopter, airplane, or parachute. That looks like fun. Airborne soldiers stand ready to conduct <laughs> a range of missions. Man, getting a better look at this thing, it looks really, really decrepit. I'm not sure how old the actual Trainasium is. If you guys have that information, if you like went and joined the Paras or you did the Trainasium like a while back, let me know down in the comment section. But this thing looks like it's at least like 30 years old or something man and yeah it's just it's literally just like metal piping and and wood it's pretty cool it's very like i don't know it's like rugged i i guess it kind of adds to the allure of the trainasium from prevention tasks to complex high intensity warfare <laughs> it's like ninja warrior so uh, as you can see now we've got the recruits at primus opportune out on the trainasium uh, what, what are we looking for as DS on this? We're looking for their reaction. Mm. So as soon as the DS give that word of command, do they react straight away? Are they hesitant? It's the it. way we construct that into the concept of operations and stuff like that as well is if they're in the door of an aircraft and that green light comes on, they need mm. to have that confidence to jump there and then when the PGI tells them to. It's funny he actually mentioned the green light because that's actually a disqualifying thing in the US Army Airborne. Now, I guess, you know, if you're trying to not talk as much when you're trying to be like super stealthy, flying in a plane and jumping out, I don't know. It seems like it's going to be a pretty loud thing. But from what I understand, yeah, if the light is green, you're supposed to be able to identify that and go. But I mean, if you're clothesline, you can probably just go like in the back. And if I see other people jumping out, I'm probably going to jump out as well. So I'm not sure if there are some workarounds or if I'm just talking out of my butt here. If you guys are airborne and you have a little more information on top of that, please let me know. But yeah, I don't know if there are, you know, workarounds or waivers for that. So it might be the same in the British Army, but I'm not entirely sure. Do that, then obviously that affects the operations out of the ground. If they've not got that bit of specialist equipment or if that man doesn't go, the battle it has on there. Maybe I have to do another pass. And again, it all affects us operationally. Hmm. It doesn't look that high when you're looking at it, but I'm sure it's pretty, pretty spooky when you're up there. Okay, is that some, is that water? Just straight like allergy. Having completed the 10 miler before lunch, Joe now <laughs> has to contend lunch. with the Trinasium aerial confidence course Jeez. on the afternoon of day one of test week. Really? If they fail this, hmm. they're instantly deemed unfit for service in airborne forces. That makes sense. Right. You kind of have to just get over heights. It's pretty easy. It's a lot easier than you think. Uh, we're just about to take on the Trinasium. This is a partial foul, uh, foul event. I, I come off the 10 miler earlier, um, <laughs> so I need to pass a 2 and a 20 miler to be able to pass P company. So I've still got a chance of passing. Um, I've got plenty of points to hmm. pick up. Obviously, I need to get through this next event, so I'm not looking too far past that. Um, I'm hoping I'm going to do well on this one now. Follow the, follow the demonstration, you can't go wrong. Just exactly <laughs> that thing looks so huge. <laughs> yes, sir. We saw it before, it was like raining and they were still doing it. Super sketchy. Damn. Hope they got their tetanus shots. <laughs> or if it's windy, you just get like blown around. Stand by. Go. If you guys have some good stories from the Trainasium, please the put them down staff below. Expect the recruits to respond to words of command without hesitation. Joe must react with confidence and commit fully to each obstacle. 
Any recruit deemed to be hesitant will be instructed to complete the activity again. That looks annoying. Again, so I'm, I really don't like heights and I can imagine doing that wire thing is probably like this, one of the sketchiest bits of that. So in the US Army, we have the air assault course where you do a few obstacles where you're going pretty high. If I can get some pictures, I'll post them up, but there's there's a lot of obstacles where you're going a little bit higher. I'm not sure if it's as high, but you're doing some pretty similar stuff as far as like having to look down and you know walk across some planks or climb over something, like climb over a netting A-frame that's really high in the air. So we do some pretty similar things, even like in the Marine Corps Confidence course, there's some pretty similar stuff, but it's probably not exactly on the same level. This is essential to ensure a recruit is suitable to move on from peak Ooh, that looks like to it hurt. <laughs> where they will be expected to complete their parachute descents prior to arriving at their battalion. Mm. Oh, nice. That's cool. I'd love to try that. My hands would be sweating the entire time. Oh, he's getting it. <laughs> Are those mustaches issued? Cause I got, I gotta say, they're looking pretty on point. I could never grow a mustache like that. Damn, they're doing that pretty quick. Are the arms out to the side mandatory? Yeah, you, you get the wrong footing and you're going to be struggling for the rest of the events. <laughs> oh, he's got a good climbing technique, actually grabbing the vertical ropes. It's a little bit quicker than just doing all this stuff. Private Cooper is still feeling the effects of this morning's 10 Oh, nice. But after being assessed by the P Company, that was a good team, one. Good push. Keen to get straight back to it. Right, number three, listen in. Stand by. Go. Okay. Come on, Joe. Let's speed. Yep. Well, he lightened the load a little bit there. We saw. Hehe. <laughs> okay. Well, it seems like he did it. <laughs> yeah, a lot less a lot less shouting than stuff you'd see in like the Marine Corps. Probably even the US Army too. Make sure when you get back tonight, you keep taking the fluids on. Don't over do the fluids. That's number three just found out there. Just take on enough fluids. <laughs> yep. through. Plenty of hydration. Plenty of food. Alright, electrolytes, all that good stuff. Get that inside, you're ready for tomorrow morning. Log mm. race. Remember what I've said before, most of you here have been on the bones of your ass on an exercise where you've got to the end of it and surprise, there's a log there for you to take through, right? If you can do that, then you can certainly do this tomorrow morning fresh. Hmm. Yep. Yes, sir. Let's get that in the head. Nice. I like the motivation. Here, and I'll see you in the morning. Sir. Just completed the Trinasium event, which is the second event of P Company. Uh, no problems, perfect weather for us. No wind, no rain. Nice. It's just no problem, everyone's passed. Good stuff. Yeah, well, it was pretty easy. We've done it plenty of times before, so we've been. Uh, oh, really? Well accustomed <laughs> I didn't even now. know that. Come on now. Oh, to be fair. Uh, I managed to get through it. I had to redo the rope swing. So, the in, the, in the US Army for the air assault course, there's a rope climb, which I've never had an issue with a rope climb. I do have like stupidly long arms. I mean, they're out of the frame here, but I have like stupid long arms. So, maybe it's easier. I mean, I also have pretty decent upper body strength, but a lot of people tend to struggle with rope climbing and stuff like that. I don't know, it's not generally like a skill that you would need to use in the military. I mean, I've not seen a purpose for it, to be honest, but it does go to demonstrate your overall fitness and upper body strength because 
yeah, a lot of people do struggle with it and they do struggle with just the coordination of actually setting a break. I'm sure this event was just for their overall confidence. And again, they have done a lot of this stuff previously. So at this point, there's probably not one little thing or one obstacle that any of these guys really struggle on to the point where they might fail. So I think at this point, it's not really a whole lot of surprises for them, which I guess kind of gets rid of some of the mystique of, of some of this stuff. But again, they are training them up properly, which is good to see. On the second, on the second go, was, um, so I just made me redo it again. So I'm just about reacting to that word command. But apart from that, everything else went well. Um, so yeah, I'm sure I passed that one. Yeah, I mean, it's... Uh, tomorrow is Black Thursday, commonly known as the Irish Day and P Company. Black so we'll Thursday. We we'll have the log race, and then in the afternoon we we'll have the steeple chase. Um, for today, I was feeling really confident for it, but I just need to make sure. I'm do my recovery right to yeah, no keep kidding. well before uh, get plenty of water down us and try and uh, He looks dehydrated as hell. <laughs> Holy cow. The steeplechase, that's gonna be pretty fun to see. So as of right now, the third part isn't out. I'm recording this probably like a week and a half before I'm actually uploading it. So just for so this reference. Morning we'll have the log race, which is a team event between eight men on the log. Oh uh, man. We'll 18 minutes complete it and then in the afternoon we'll have to see the dress. I'm feeling better than I did yesterday. I had a bit of a day yesterday. <laughs> I came up to 10 mile and like just after the second water stop. Uh, don't really know what happened, but yeah, I'm feeling better today. So mm. Yeah, if it was ready, it's going to be too long. So 18 minutes doesn't seem like, it always seems like nicer when the events have like a, t a certain time limit and it's really not like that long. But I got to say some of the crappiest stuff you can do in the military is some of the stuff that's shorter. Even like uh, like in the Marine Corps, we have the, our, our combat fitness test where you have to sprint like 800 meters or 880 meters with like your boots and your trousers on, which doesn't seem that bad. But to get like a good score, you have to really sprint. And by the end of it, you're just like done. So I think the log race is pretty much just that turned up a lot. Just for get for it's 18 minutes work, just hold on. Drive that log for us, I missed the log uh, due to being injured in the injury sooner when I come back. This team's already done it, so I'm a bit nervous to touch it for the first time. <laughs> I'm feeling all right, a bit sore from the uh, 10 mile yesterday, mm. but a uh, good stretch off last night. It helped me out, I think. Yeah, stretching yeah, works wonders. One of the most uh, apprehensive about it. We've had the least sort of time factors in it, so we'll look forward to seeing how it is. It's going to be hard. Hmm. I feel like he's doing pretty good. Good stuff. Nice. That that pre motivation. Joe, listen to me, okay? Log <laughs> race, right? Arguably the hardest event on the peak of me, okay? Just get it in your mind now. Right? As soon as you get that log, push through it. Okay? This event, right, you'll remember this for the rest of your lives. Okay? People always ask <laughs> oh, man, that's, right, that's spooky. Okay, just get it in that mindset now. Think about the maroon machine when you're hanging out, going around. Okay, think about this at the end. Okay? Nice. Everyone happy with that? Yes! <laughs> look at look at his face. He's like going completely internal. Right, you're not falling. Let's see it. Okay, you're gonna get a strike. You get three strikes. You're gone. Everyone happy with that? Yes, sir. Bloke in front of you's hanging out. Get a grip with him. Yep. True. You, again, you don't want that spotlight. But... Logs suck, but carrying something like this sucks probably more because your like, balance is just messed up. It's just super awkward. And like, their arms or their shoulders are just gonna be destroyed for like three days. Okay, this is kind of interesting. So it's not like specific teams. Oh man, that little sprint to the log though. I mean, I guess you'd probably want to be one of the first ones to get to it, but man, that's got to mess with your head. Damn, they're going quick too. They got some nice downhills, but then, you know, you got to go uphill too. Oh my God, like right there. 
Oh yeah, their ro their wrists are just gonna get like destroyed by that rope too. And they're gonna get wet and make everything like even heavier. <laughs> oh snap. Oh snap, no kidding, sheesh. Man, this is good stuff. Hell yeah. Damn, they're doing good. They're still moving quick. You wouldn't think it, it would be that bad with that many people carrying a log, but it really doesn't help that much. Your legs just turn into like sandbags immediately. <laughs> that dude seems like he's doing pretty good. Where does his helmet go? <laughs> Number 26 was the last man standing on his log, and the directing staff have jumped on with him to get the log over the finish line. Good stuff. This level of commitment is exactly what the directing staff are looking for. Good stuff for Despite 26 starting too. starting with eight in a team, many of the logs are down to just three individuals. Regardless of this, Joe is expected to keep pushing forward. Hmm. Yeah, it went all right. I'm glad I managed to stay on in one of arguably the hardest events. I did get chalked in the last chalked in the last 50 meters, which is pretty disappointing. But it is what it is. I still got points. <laughs> uh, later on in the day, uh, we've got damn the later in the day into the hard event. That should be in the afternoon, so we've got that to look forward to. No kidding, jeez, that's yeah, brutal. I was expecting it to be. It won't lie when I say it's going to be the hardest event. Uh, seven have started, three have finished. It was a pretty tough day, but I've recovered from yesterday and got one bit so Damn, uh, yeah, no kidding. Steve will chase me off then. That really is brutal, huh? Yeah, it was alright. I thought I was doing better than I was, but apparently I went in front of my knot, so I was struck off. Hmm. It's unfortunate, but it is what it is. Bad, but after we got through the water, I thought it was fine. The log was moving rapid, my log was in first, but yeah. Uh, Steve Chase this afternoon, it's a good event, chance to make up some points, so I look forward to that. So that's okay. the two mile log race, um, it simulates moving heavy weapons, ammunition or fire stores to the front, front of the battlefield where it's needed. All right. Crucially, like with any other event, they need to arrive prepared to fight. Today we've lost hmm. about five, it's expected, they've still got the stretch of race. They pull that out of the bag, they can still pass. All the carrying, like all that weight, man. It's going to destroy your legs and your back and your shoulders and stuff. All right. Dang, that was cool. I almost like didn't realize the video was actually over. So very, very exciting. I definitely want to check out the rest of these episodes. So we're halfway done. Again, as of right now, episode three isn't out, but I will try and upload that. Record and upload that like shortly after this video so hopefully the scheduling works out okay but let me know what you guys think about this and again of course if you guys have some experience with the paras even if your your buddies were in the paras or they went through the training let me know what they said about it if you have any interesting stories please throw them down in the comment section because again we like to we like to hear those stories because yeah it looks brutal i mean i have very few things to compare this to i mean i've done a squad competition that was pretty brutal i've done like just general marine corps stuff like confidence course endurance courses obstacle courses but this is just it just sucks whenever you have to carry like heavy weight like that it just destroys your legs and recovering from that is very very difficult but i'm excited to see how they do in these next couple parts and hopefully everyone that we've been following in this series so far makes it through okay but yeah Hopefully you guys enjoyed this reaction. Thank you for watching. Again, comment, let me know what you think. And then you can hit that thumbs up and subscribe if you guys haven't subscribed. But that is it for this video. I will see you all in the next one.